In this video, I'm going to show you how to quickly create an endless number of pharmaceutical calculations, questions and answers that you can use to practice and improve your performance and we are starting right now. Hello, this is Dr. Dankwa and if this is your first time here and you'd like to learn pharmaceutical calculations, tips, tricks and strategies, then start by subscribing and clicking the bell so you don't miss anything. So let's get right to it. Now once you've learned a pharmaceutical calculations concept, one of the surest ways to master it is to engage in targeted practice. So by doing this, you're actually working hard on perhaps the most important aspect of learning pharmaceutical calculations and this will lead to success. Now you can get practice questions from textbooks, you can get them from question banks like the Naples Calculations Question Bank that we offer that comes with step-by-step -step video solutions and those resources are useful. However, what you actually need from time to time is more practice questions on a specific concept or question type and that is where the strategy that I'm about to show you will prove priceless. So let me demonstrate it now and to do that, I'll be using BVC which is the number one AI learning platform. So now let's go to BVC and then once you are logged in you want to click on services and there are several modules in here but what you actually want to do is click on chat bvnc and so once you've clicked on chat bvnc it's going to bring you to this interface and there are two models here what you want to do is change this to the advanced model and there are a number of ways you can proceed so you could simply copy and paste the question that you would like to generate more of in there but let me show you actually an important strategy here so i'm going to bring up this question and this is a topic that I was teaching on flow rate calculations and I use this example in class. And so the question is in blue and then I provide a very nice way to solve the question and that's what's in yellow. So there is some method to the solution and let's say you're a student and you wanted to generate more of this type of question and also follow the solution for the new questions that you are solving. So what you can simply do is take a picture of the question and solution or a snapshot like I have here and then you can upload this to the chat bvnc so let me just demonstrate what that will look like so now what you want to do is upload the picture of the question and the answer and to do that you're going to click on this paper clip icon and you want to select the question so now the image has uploaded and we want to put in a very straightforward simple prompt and so the first prompt you want to put in there is just going to copy and paste it here and it says analyze this image and give me three similar questions and answers follow the same answer process shown in the image so you can change this number you can make it whatever number you want it to be i'm just using three to illustrate and then once you put in the prompt you want to click on this icon right here and just allow the bvc ai to do its own thing and so there you have it so now you have three questions and as you'll notice it follows a very similar pattern to the question that i showed earlier which has similar language but you'll notice that the numbers have been changed so the amount of drag the amount of volume that you have and then the flow rate has also been changed so i'm just going to bring up the original question so you can take a look so in the original question it said the pharmacist adds 250 milligrams of drug a to 500 ml of normal saline or 0.9 percent sodium chloride if the solution is administered at the rate of 1.6 milliliters per minute how many milligrams of drug a would the patient receive in one hour well the nearest whole number do not include units so now in solving this question, we use dimension analysis and the very first term right here, the 250 milligrams over 500 ml, that's actually a concentration. So you take this amount of drug, divide that by the volume, and then you multiply that by the flow rate, which is milliliters per minute. So 1.6 milliliters per minute. And then you multiply that by the time. So you have one hour and then you convert that to minutes and you end up multiplying all the terms, the numerator divided by the terms, the denominator, and that gives you the answer. Now, when you go back to what BVC just did, which is really, really fantastic and elegant, you notice that it changed the amount of drug, it changed the volume, and also changed the flow rate. So those are the key variables or parameters that could be changed or altered. Now, when you look at the solution, you follow the very similar format, the concentration, which is 200 milligrams per ml, multiplied by the flow rate times the time in minutes. So you notice that for all of the questions, right? So now you have your question and then your answer. 
So this is really good. You could put in as many questions as you want to practice this particular format or type. And to make it even more engaging, you could just have the questions and then you have the question and then the answer. So to do that, let's just put in another prompt and I'll put all the prompts in the description so that I can have access to them and use them. And I'm also going to put a link to the BBC software in the description so you can go check it out for yourself. But let me just copy and I'm going to paste the next prompt that we're going to use. And so this prompt here is saying, give me three more questions and answers. This time, give me the three questions without the answers and then give me the three questions with the answers. All right, so let's see what that looks like. And the number three is just a random number I picked. You can use any number that you want. You could do 10, 20, whatever number you feel is necessary for you to master the concept. So click on the arrow once again and just let the BVC AI do its own thing. And let's see what happens just fantastic right so you have the three questions and this you could use as real targeted practice so you take the question you take question one you go through the question analyze the question and then you solve the question so here it gave different amounts of drugs different volumes different flow rates and then it also includes the conditions of rounding to the nearest whole number do not include units Right, so this is the question you give it your best attempt and then you can look at the solution afterwards so just to make things easier we have the question you have the answer you have the question you have the answer and you have the question and you have the answer really nice way to master this particular format so just to recap the first thing that we did is we asked for three questions and answers which the bbc ai gave us really nicely and then we wanted the format where we have just the questions followed by the questions and answers it did that really elegantly now the next thing we want to do is take it up a notch and let's say you know that your professor really likes conversions right so for this question one thing that they could do is maybe tweak the question in such a way that you need to do a conversion at the end so let's put in a prompt that will give us some examples of how that would look like and that's the way you really expand your understanding of a topic what are the things that could change and what are the things that can be tested so I'm going to copy and paste this prompt in there. So this is the next prompt you're going to be using. So then this prompt says, give me three more questions and answers. This time, give me the three questions without the answers and then the three questions with the answers. Also, slightly modify the question to include a conversion step for the answer. So what we're expecting is up to now, the question has been asking for how many milligrams, but actually we could have a slight variation at the end. So let's see what the BBC AI gives us. So just click on this arrow and let BBC do its own thing. So here again, you have three questions following the same format that we used for the previous prompt, because that's part of the new prompt that we put in. And what you will notice is that now it's asking for how many grams because we asked for a conversion at the end, right? So instead of having milligrams, now it's saying how many grams. So just look at how quickly it gave you those three questions. And now we can look at even the answer or the solution to each of the questions. So it follows the same format because we like the format that was used. Let's say you're a student and that's the format that you've been taught in class using dimension analysis and the professor really wants you to master that technique or concept. So now you have an example question which was generated very quickly with a slight twist, which is something that your professor could do or even you could do as a practice to expand your understanding of the topic. And then you notice that it gives you the solution and then in the last step, there's the conversion step. So instead of milligrams, like the previous questions I've been asking about, all of these were in milligrams. Now the question is asking for grams and it's provided the solution, right? So this is really, really a nice way to go about it. And if you will notice because of the numbers that have been used, instead of round to the nearest whole number, it says round to the nearest hundred, which actually is a format that could be asked. Right, so now not only are you having a conversion step, but it's actually also asking whether I can recognize and remember things like the nearest hundred, the nearest tenth, in addition to the nearest whole number. So just look at how this could really expand your practice in a more targeted fashion. Right, so these are ways you could really use to quickly generate the question and then also do some more practice. And the good thing is you have the solutions. Now let's even take it one more notch further. Right. So let's say you really now want to understand the logic behind how the question is solved. We know dimensional analysis, what is being used here to solve the question. That was the example I taught in class. That is the strategy that we use. But what really is the thought process behind the setup? How you are arranging even the numbers? 
So this is the last prompt we are using in this video. But with this strategy, you can really take it into several dimensions to really improve your understanding. And if you're interested in that kind of strategy of using AI and tech to skyrocket your understanding, then I'm going to put a link to a program in the description and then you can just go check out the program. So let's get back to the solution here. It says, now I want you to give me a step-by-step -step breakdown of the solution process. Include the rationale for each step. Use question, let's say question number three as the example. So we're going to click on this arrow right here and let BBC do its own thing. And so now it's going to use question three and there are several question threes in here, but basically it's this particular question three, this very question, the pharmacist asked 720 milligrams of drug J, and it's going to use that as a tool to break down the thought process behind how the dimension analysis is set up. So he has the question and then he talks about the solution process. So the first thing he's telling us is first you need to find the concentration of drug J, the solution, which is exactly what you want to do. So that's where the 720 milligrams divided by the 40, 40 ml comes into the picture so when you look at this solution this ratio right here is the amount of drag in the volume provided right so that's the reason why you have that set up that way now since we asked for the rationale it spells out exactly what is going on here it says this step calculates the concentration of drug j in the solution which tells us how much drag is present per milliliter concentration is essential for determining the amount delivered to the patient over time then the next piece talks about calculate the total drug J administered per minute, which is basically the flow rate. So now the next portion, which will be from here, the 3.5 ml, that is the flow rate. You're multiplying this ratio here by the flow rate. It's basically telling that the reason for that is to find the amount of drug administered per minute. So what is the rationale? By multiplying the concentration by the rate of administration, which is milliliters per minute. So the next step is you calculate the total drug J administered per minute. And if you notice, it says drug J per minute, which is milligrams per minute. So just pay attention to the units. That's equal to the concentration times 3.5 milliliters per minute. So what's this concentration? That will be this ratio right here. So what you notice is it's saying as the rationale by multiplying the concentration by the rate of administration in milliliters per minute, we determine how much drug J is delivered to the patient every minute. This tells us the immediate drug delivery rate necessary for understanding dosage over a specified duration. And then the next piece is calculating the total amount of drug administered in 90 minutes, which is the time that is specified in the question. So for 90 minutes. So what's the rationale here again? This step translates the per minute dosage rate into the total dosage over the given time period, which is 90 minutes in this question. And it gives the cumulative effect of the administration, allowing us to know the total drug received. And then the last piece is the conversion piece where you take the amount in milligrams and divide by a thousand because a thousand milligrams is one gram. And you notice that in the rationale, it tells us that. So since the question asks for final amount in grams, this conversion is necessary to provide the answer in the correct units. Converting milligrams to grams involves dividing by a thousand as one gram equals a thousand milligrams. So now it gives you the final answer. And for the rationale, it says the final result is rounded to meet the instructions of rounding to the nearest hundred, ensuring precision in reporting the dosage delivered. So it also gives you like a concluding statement. By following these systematic steps, we ensure that the amount of drug J administered to the patient is accurately calculated, taking into account all necessary conversions and given instructions. So you can beat it. And you can really go on and on in so many different ways to ensure that you're having a deeper understanding on what you're studying. And so if you want more information, once again, just check the link in the description. But for now, just by using these four prompts, we quickly created multiple questions which are following very similar format to what was uploaded. And by giving it the right prompts, it gives us the questions and the answers, even in the format that we prefer. Right, so this is a really nice way to expand your repository of questions that you can practice with in a more targeted way. So you're not just doing random questions from a textbook or some other source, but if you really need to hone in on a specific topic and skill, you use the examples that are provided with the solutions if you have it, and then it's going to model it and give you several more to practice with. So that really is the strategy, but before ending this video, let's just demonstrate what it looks like on a different question so that you know it works, not just for flow rates. So let's start a new chat session and I'm going to upload a different question. 
And so just so you know, the question that I uploaded is an allegation type question. So we'll see how the AI is able to handle this type of uh, question and whether it's able to give us very good examples. So let's get back to the platform and I'm going to put in the same prompts as before. So the first prompt that we did put in was this one, which says, analyze the image and give me three similar questions and answers follow the same answer process shown in the image. And we want to click this icon right here, allow the VC AI to do its own thing All right so it has the question and then it gives you the solution same thing question and the solution so all of these are correct and you notice question one for example this is a pharmacist is asked to prepare one liter of a 15 percent solution she only has five percent and a 35 percent solution in stock how many milliliters of the five percent solution will be required to compound the prescription so it doesn't really use the grid here but it tells you the parts of each of the solutions so if you actually did the grid you end up with those parts those are correct and then it gives you the total parts which is very similar to what we have here so it doesn't really use the grid but it it tells you these numbers the number of parts of each of the solution which it did correctly so basically it follows the same solution strategy here it just didn't give you the grid but everything else aligns really nicely and then it's able to quickly and correctly identify the parts of each of the solution and then it gives you the volume very nicely so i'm going to quickly go through the rest of the prompts because we really went into detail in the first example and the whole point here is to show that it works for every type of question and actually not just for pharmaceutical calculations you could do this for all sorts of topics and they will really help improve your targeted practice and ultimately your performance on the exams. So once again, I put in the prompt where it gives you the questions and then the questions and the answers. And so here we have it. So you have the three questions and then for the questions with the answers, it gives it to you really nicely. So basically it works on all questions. That was the point of this particular part of the video. So now let's put in the next prompt. Let's still keep the conversion piece. Let's see how it's able to handle that. So it says how many liters and then how many milliliters. So that should work really nicely. So now you have the answers in liters. So you have 3.125 liters for the question one. And then there's the conversion to 3125 milliliters. So it worked really nicely and all the solutions are correct. And then now for the last prompt. So here it tries to break the question down, tells you what the strategy is. So it gives, first you need to understand the task. So the task is to create a mixture with a specific concentration, 18% ethanol, using two available solutions of different concentrations. So you have the 5 and 40%. We need to determine the amount of the 5% solution required to achieve the target concentration in a total volume of 3.5 liters, as stated in the question. So now in step two, it says identify the difference in concentrations. So you find basically the number of parts of each of the solution that you're using which it does really elegantly here and tells you about the concept there and then it says determine the ratio of the solution needed so it lets you know that the differences calculated above allow us to set a ratio between the two solutions so for every 22 parts of the five percent solution you have 13 parts of the 40 percent solution and then you find the total parts because it gave you the total quantity and then you determine the volume of the five percent solution so you take the parts so that represent the five percent solution which is 22 parts Parts, divided by the total parts, multiply that by the total volume, and that gives you the total volume in liters. And then when you are done, you convert the liters to milliliters using the conversion factor of one liter being a thousand milliliters. And then it gives you a really nice conclusion. So the point here is these prompts work for different types of pharmaceutical calculations questions. Naturally, it works for several types of calculations from differentiation to integration and anything else you're going to be interested in using this for, even for non-calculation topics you can quickly generate and create an endless number of practice questions that you can use to study. And not just the practice questions, but also the solutions to the question, especially when you have provided it a very good model. So I hope you found this video tutorial useful. If you did, be sure to like it and share it. If you have any questions, just leave them in the comments and I'll get to them as soon as I see them. If you'd like to learn more pharmaceutical calculations, tips, tricks, and strategies, then start by subscribing and clicking the bell so you don't miss anything. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you in the next video.